is always, am I too old? Is it too late? And I'll always say almost every single time, no, it's not. 39 years old, you might think, holy crap, you know, my life is halfway over. I'm, you know, I, there's no way I can restart in, into a different trade and start a new career. And that's not true at all. And I always say this, when I got into the lineman apprenticeship, I was 20 years old, 20, 21. I had guys in there, probably the mid, the average age for guys in my apprenticeship class were Hello, welcome back to episode six of CTQ. CTQ is a segment I do on this channel, what stands for Cruise to Questions. This is where I take your guys' questions that you guys either ask me in the YouTube comments down below. If you guys submit them, send them to me on Instagram DMs or email them to me at austin at bluecolleredu.com, TikTok, LinkedIn, wherever you can find Blue Collar EDU or me, you can ask the questions and I'll take those questions and I just put them in my pool of questions. And this is where I take a couple of those questions and I answer them here. The reason that for doing this is because if you have the question, someone else probably has the same question or a question that's very similar. So you're not the only one and I'm here to kind of help you and others find a pathway in skilled trades and start getting a career. Now, a lot of these questions are more so specifically towards the lineman trade because that's kind of where my audience is geared towards the lineman trade. But a lot of the things that I talk about getting started in the lineman trade and how to get started and those sorts of things are very applicable to other trades as well. What I found in my experience working in the lineman trade and even before that doing welding and then power line tree trim clearance and then now the lineman trade. A lot of these trades, they're all pretty similar in aspect as far as like getting started applying the skills, the traits, the, the know-hows, the tips and tricks, the advice, a lot of them are very well applicable across the board. So what I talk about here, questions regarding the lineman trade, take them as you will, but they're also very well applicable towards other trades. And so this is why I kind of do this. So with that being said, let's hop into question number one. Question number one comes from a gentleman from a YouTube video comment section. His name, his thing is at Car Hauler Hustle. Now his question is, is it too late for me to try to be a lineman? I'm 39. I've been in trucking for 11 years now. Class A holder. And this is, this is a pretty common question I'll get between, you know, I don't say I get it all the time, but is always, am I too old? Is it too late? And I'll always say almost every single time, no, it's not. 39 years old, you might think, holy crap, you know, my life is halfway over. I'm, you know, I, there's no way I can restart in, into a different trade and start a new career. And that's not true at all. And I always say this, when I got into the lineman apprenticeship, I was 20 years old, 20, 21. I had guys in there probably the mid, the average age for guys in my apprenticeship class were, I'm, I'm gonna say was in the mid thirties and early to mid thirties was the average age. There was only a couple of us who was like, there was an 18 year old, there was a couple 19 year olds, there was a few 20, 21 year olds, but majority of the apprenticeship class was 30 year olds. Now that's because they've gone through their early adulthood, 18 to 30, and maybe they, they tried other trades or they went to college and pursued a college degree and thought that's something they want to do and then found out that that wasn't the case. And by the time they got the courage to find and want to do something else, they're already well into their thirties. And so, but they still hopped into it and did what they wanted to do. So to answer the question shortly, 39 years old, you're not, it's not too late. You're not too old. Also going back to when I was an apprentice, I had guys in my class and the class above me, class below me, that were well into their 40s. And I think there's even a, a guy or two that were in their 50s. Now, if you think 39 is too late, I don't think so. Because if you do the math, 39 years old, it's it's a 7,000 hour apprenticeship. In most trades, it's seven, 8,000 hours apprenticeship. And Normally that takes, if you work a 40 hour work week, 
7,000 hours will usually take you around four years, four, four and a half. Now, a lot of times you're not just working 40 hours. You're getting a lot of hours and your apprenticeship is based off hours for the most part. Now, things are kind of changing a little bit where um, it used to be like six months, you know, or a thousand hours you step in your apprenticeship. So what I mean by stepping is it's a seventh, seven step apprenticeship. The lineman trade is a, is a seven step apprenticeship. So a thousand hours to step. So first to second step is a thousand hours and second to third, a thousand and so on and so forth until you get to a seventh step, the 7,000 hours and you complete the apprenticeship. And so if you're even doing that, you know, it's a three and a half to four year apprenticeship working probably 40, 50 hour a week. I was working on average, I was probably working 45 hours a week on average for me. And it took me three years, three months to complete it. Now, like I was saying, things are changing a little bit where they're going from hours work to minimum of six months. So it takes six months for you to step, whether you have a thousand hours, you might have 1200 hours, but it still takes six months. And, but for you as 39 years old, you could become a journeyman at, I don't know if you just turned 39 or if you're almost 40, either way, you'll be in your 44, 43, 44 years old, and you'll be a journeyman lineman. That still gives you, if you start, let's say at 40 years old, 20 years in a union, building your retirement, working all the hours, saving money, investing wherever, that sort of stuff. Besides what you already have acquired in your 11 years of of trucking, you know, 20 years brings you into 60. And really still, that's that's like a a retirement age is what, 63, 64, 65. So by the time you hit retirement age, you already have 25 years in the lineman trade, which is significant. That's really good. I, you know, if I put 20 years, which I will, but 20 years for me will be, I'll be 40 years old and I'll probably continue to work in the trade past my forties, but 20 years is a pretty good career in the lineman trade. So at 39 years old, it's not too late. And there's a couple guys who commented on this guy's comment that are, it's refreshing to see this guy comment says, in my opinion, it's never too late to start something new. If it increases your happiness slash quality of life. I find a big problem with older people trying to get into a new trade is that they have financial obligations that a new trade cannot hold up. And I agree with that comment a lot as well, because there, if you are in your thirties, forties, and you have financial obligations, you have a mortgage, you have a family to try to pivot and find a different career. It's the lineman trade is very competitive and I'm like, it might take you a while. So by any means, I wouldn't quit what you're doing right now and go full force into trying to get to lineman trade. Right now is slow part of the lineman season anyway, because of election year and things like that. But that's a very great point that that person makes is that, yes, you start out as a groundman or a first step and their wage is a little bit, of course, lower. And I don't know what you made as a trucker, as a... Uh, you know, what kind of money you made there. But the good thing is as a trucker, you say you're a class A holder, so you already have your class A CDL, which sometimes that's one of the biggest road bumps for a lot of people getting started in the trade is like, that's the biggest um, credential or certificate you kind of need right off the get-go to get started in the trade is having a class A CDL with no auto restrictions, uh, with air brakes, and then any other um, add-on certification you can have with that license is only going to help you. Um, so no, it's not too late. And I say, go for it. You already have 39, you already have 20 plus years of life experience, which is only going to help in your advantage as you want to get into the trade. Um, so I say go for it and any further questions or anything like that about the lineman trade, like steps and trips and tricks and advice. Of course, I have all these videos on the YouTube channel. Um, 
if you go to the album or playlist, becoming alignment one-on-one, or if you can go to a website, bluecolledu.com and click on career tab and alignment trade is on the page. Uh, there's a course that you can enroll in. It's a cost a little bit of money, but it's hands down, gives you every single piece of information, step-by-step step, what you need to do to get started and things that'll help you while you're inside the apprenticeship. So car hauler, call car hauler hustler. Is it too late? No, it's not too late. If you want to do it, start dip your toes in the water and just start swimming towards the goal of being a lineman. It's not too late. Question number two. This is a gentleman or somebody uh, that emailed me, but they said, emailing you for some advice. I recently got my CDL class A with no restrictions in California. I have no lineman school education other than welding certificates, but didn't end up working in the welding industry. Do you recommend that I transfer my CDL class A to another state? Since competition in California is highly competitive for groundmen and linemen work. Also, my uncle lives in Arizona and works as an HVAC technician foreman. Would that be a related experience for a lineman apprenticeship if I decided to move out there? Planning on signing the books at 769 as a groundman too. Sorry for the long message. Anyways, thank you for your time and uploading videos. You're doing amazing work. Thank you for that nice little comment and thank you for this question. Great question. No line minutes school experience, but you do have your class A CDL. Um, you do have some welding certificates. Do you recommend that I transfer my CDL to another state? Yes. I fully think you should. Now, the thing about California is I've worked with the I've worked in California and the apprentices there and the people there working the linemen, they're cut in, they're great linemen, they're great apprentices. I know they have a great apprenticeship, but it's so competitive that there's so many people that want to become a lineman in California that the apprenticeship they have hundreds and thousands of applicants and people interviewing, and the competition is so strong. So if you don't have like the best test score, the best interview and the best experience, I'm you, you probably won't get ranked that good. You might get ranked in the hundreds, which would mean it would take several years possibly if they even keep applicants that long to get called out as an apprentice in California. Now, I mean, you could get lucky or you might be a great interviewer. You might be a great applicant. I don't know from your experience. I'm not sure how old you are, um, but I mean, if Cal Nav, if if their apprenticeship opens, I say apply for it within the time frame of you kind of decide on what you want to do. I'd apply for it still and go through the whole entire application process and still do all the required steps to for the apprenticeship. I will say you will have a better opportunity to get into an apprenticeship elsewhere, just because competition in California is so high. Um, and also, I mean, it's competitive anywhere you go in the country, of course, if you want Northwest or uh, Swolcat or Mountain States or Alabat or any apprenticeship in the country for the lineman is extremely competitive. So don't take that card out of the stack because that card's always gonna be there. You mentioned something very good about moving to Arizona and your uncle is a HVAC technician foreman and you're wondering if that's related experience for lineman apprenticeship. And I say any working in any trade is great experience. Now, the best experience you can get for lineman related experience is being a groundman on a lineman crew or doing uh, dirt work, uh, like laying conduit in the ground for future wire going in the ground, um, doing power line tree treatment clearance, those sorts of things that are like directly related with the lineman trade or working around power lines. That sort of stuff is the best experience you can get. But outside of that, and those can even kind of get hard to get into those positions. But as far as like getting experience in the HVAC world, that's great experience in my opinion, because and I've said this in previous videos, previous podcasts, that 
if I'm on the interview board and I have an applicant like you who has his Class A CDL and his experience is real world experience, you know, let's say you worked in the HVAC world, you worked with your uncle who's a technician and you did that sort of thing, which I know in the HVAC world, depending if you're doing residential, commercial, it doesn't really matter. You're, you're messing with low voltage electricity for the most part, especially residential. I mean, you're doing physical labor, you're putting things together and you're fixing a problem for the most part. Um, so like those skills you're gonna learn inside the trade are great. And those skills are, ver they will apply to lineman trade. And as long as you use those skills and the things you learn inside the HVAC world, I'm, I'm pretty confident are going to apply in the lineman trade. So it's great experience. You'll get great experience. You'll learn a lot of things inside that trade. And it's also just another tool to put in your belt because the lineman trade could take a long time. If you move to Arizona and you apply at Swole Cat in Arizona, it's competitive here too, and it's competitive anywhere you go. But getting experience just in a trade, whether that's HVAC or that's welding of sorts, or that's power line tree trim clearance, or doing some sort of dirt work, any trade experience is gonna be great experience. Going back to, if I'm on the interview board and I'm interviewing two people and I'm interviewing a guy like you who has his Class A CDL and happens to have a couple years or a year or so experience working in the HVAC world versus a guy who's the same age and has his Class A CDL, but the only experience he has is Lyman school or education like that, I'm probably gonna take you as the better applicant just because I see that you have experience working in a trade, you have real world experience, you have the proper certifications like a class A CDL, and to me, you just seem like a better applicant for the trade. Now, there can be nepotism involved in this trade for sure, so don't rule that out at all. But I will say move, out of California, but at the same time, if California opens up their apprenticeship, apply for that one and then go through their application process. You might do really good. You know, you might end up getting a really good score in the interview and like being the, a really good applicant. I don't know that, but I will say it's competitive. So the best thing that you could do, and I always tell people from California this, is move your license, move to somewhere else like Arizona and apply for a swole cat or somewhere else there's plenty of apprenticeships um, apply at utilities if you want to stay home or try to stay local but those are extremely competitive and nepotism is very involved there and usually they only hire a couple applicants maybe a year um, but yeah come out here to arizona that's where i'm at start getting experience with their uncle in hvac uh, apply for swole cat when they open their applications and that's honestly what I would do. Plan on signing the books is IBW769. Do that as well. I know they don't call out many groundmen anymore out of 769, but that doesn't mean you won't get got called out. Uh, for sure, do that. Get your name on the books. Meet the people at the union hall. Shake hands. Ask for their names. Ask any questions you have or any points or advice or tips and tricks. Uh, just get to know people and then at some point, it just becomes a waiting game as well. So that's my advice to you, Zionel. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly, but that's kind of what I would tell you to do. So hopefully you can learn from those questions. Two great questions, and thanks guys for asking those questions. Like I said, if you guys want to submit any of your questions, if you have questions, you can email them to me at austin at bluecollaredu.com or DM me on Instagram at bluecollaredu. Put them in the YouTube comments down below. Maybe you see this on TikTok. You see our channel on TikTok. Put the comments or your questions, DM me there as well. There's multiple different ways you can ask your questions. So your questions, hopefully they ask, hopefully they help you and anyone else who's watching this or listening to this. With Blue Collar EDU, I'm here to expose, teach, educate you about blue collar career opportunities and things that help you getting started in a skilled trade. And with that being said, I'll catch you on CTQ episode seven.